Right now, you've got that thing cleaned up, that heat exchanger. So, as you can see on our um, airbox here, we've got um, turbocharged airflow from up here down to here. All right. So, as the lid sits on it, the air will come across here from the turbo into here, then into the engine down through here. Right, and this arrow here is cooling air. So from the back here, which is air cleaner side, tip turbine fan side, and out to atmosphere here. So when you're setting these things up from scratch, <clears throat> just use some sort of elastic to, um, yeah, wider or clear or something like that. I mean, theoretically, if your turbo's not passing oil, you're not going to get oil in them. Um, and you can see the section of the seal, that style of thing. So um, you just want to glue them on there. And obviously with Celastic, you've got to let it set a bit. So you can't just put them on there and then expect them to, you know, retain their shape and retain their position on the way in. So let, let them sit for a little while. Make sure I got it the right way after all that talk. Yeah, I actually think it was in the wrong way before. Not the wrong way, but it was. But it was. Um, <clears throat> I think it was upside down, which wouldn't matter because it's still the same lot of air. So I just blew it through, blew it through from both ways. You can actually see a difference in the shape of the fins for the engineer. The engineer fins are a bit finer to what the outside air is. Like I said, it's all. In a perfect system, it's all filtered anyway. You've got two air intakes in there for that reason. But anyway, certainly worth doing. There's a lot of stuff in there that shouldn't have been in there. It's always the risk of something's been sitting around. But as I mentioned earlier, if if this thing was all sealed up and you know it had just been sitting, sitting but sealed, and there was no way of anything getting in there, well, I, I wouldn't have worried about it. You know, might take the pipe off going from the air cleaner to the engine to make sure that nothing's got in there but um, otherwise there'd be no reason to go go chasing with this one here I've actually just found a, the remnants of a wasp nest in here the bugger um, yeah just because this one was just open everywhere um, yeah it's just in our best interest to give it a Spend 15 or 20 minutes pulling it apart, cleaning it up, and putting it back together. Um, there's another thing you can do if it's, you know, when you're um, if you're rebuilding one, you always want to do this. You want to clean that, clean that heat exchanger pretty well. Um, you know, like if you're chasing a low power complaint, wouldn't be the first thing I'd go to, but it'd be something I'd um, I'd certainly look at. I mean, you you got to think of it as as um, a block intercooler. So if air's not getting through there, or you know, or if if it's not being cooled as, as well as it should, well it, it's going to be slightly down on what it should be. So anyway, that's got that clean. So yeah, like I say, that's <clears throat> that's turbo, turbo in, right? This little spout here is where the turbo boost comes outward to spin the tip turbine fan and I'll show you that later when I'm putting it on when you're putting these bolts back in this alloy housing I always want to use a little bit of a um, little bit, bit of anti-seize might end up looking like the, the Wizard of Oz because you end up getting it all over you, uh, like the Tin Man from the Wizard of Oz, I should say. Because you get it all over you, it gets everywhere, but it, it is pretty handy stuff if you've got to split it next time round. Bloody stuff, it gets everywhere, there's no doubt. I did pick up that bolt off the ground too, in case you're wondering. Just about due to drop another one down there. 
So I'll, I'll put all these side ones in. And then last of all I'll put that bloke on there because it's a nut, nut and washer. Bloody helicoils come out of that one. Should have checked that a bit better when I was taking the thing apart. Right, yeah, that, that's installed. <clears throat> I'll tell you what else I installed. It was a nice drop of anti seize all over my shifter, so, like I mentioned a minute ago, this stuff gets everywhere, and that's how you slop a bit around. Next thing you know, it's on the back of your sleeve or one of your tools, and making a complete kelpie of itself. Anyway. Right, so with that, I might just get you around that other side. And try and fit that tip turbine fan up you know, just while we're on a bit of a roll with this particular part of it. Just um, go easy for a moment. I'm going to undo this camera from its position here so it'll be shaking and carrying on. Somewhere near it now. That's from yesterday, don't worry about that. So, looking now in daylight, we've got, you can see clearly our, our two holes in that uh, cool power box there. So, what I'm going to do initially, I'll leave the, the turbo pipe off it. For a couple of reasons, just in case there's been any shit in this exhaust manifold that comes up through the turbo at a great rate of knots, well, I'm um, just let it fly out to atmosphere. 
clear its throat a bit but also just in case for whatever reason <coughs> excuse me if that pump wants to run away like the old Cummins did we've got a way of stopping it so let the turbo just buddy spin and and um, yeah, you know just sort of put the pressure side out to atmosphere for a little while we'll get it running make sure the pumps gonna do the right thing and behave itself and then we'll We'll hook up this hose, find a piece of boost hose for this bottom side of it and put that V-clamp on back up there. Anyway, just for the time being it'll be right. Now, this is another one of those times where I'll, I wish I had a cameraman. I'm trying to find a spot here that's going to be beneficial to you. Still see that cool power box. See my handle right there, that's pretty handy, isn't it? Pardon the punt. Right, we're still going there, that's a start. Stay there a moment. Let's grab a screwdriver from this other side and a spanner, and we'll be in business. Because we've already got a hose up on there, I'll just take the hose off this existing tip turbine fan. Freed this clamp up a little bit yesterday. Right, yeah. So it just sits on there with a, <clears throat> it's just got two flat faces with a with a machine V on the other side, which get, this clamp goes over and. And so it's in. What I didn't do though was put that bloody clamp on. A bit ahead of myself again. Rightio, take two. So by the time you get all your piping on one of these F models, it's pretty busy in here, there's not a lot of room. Not the least accessible system I've ever seen, but it's close. So 
7 16th on your V clamp. Rightio, we're just about done there. Oh yeah, tip turbine fan installed. <clears throat> so yeah, when um, by the time you get. This pipe on here, then you've got a this pipe will go on here with a bit of rubber. So we'll run back in under there. And it runs along sort of this side here <clears throat> with a heat shield over your turbo. I have a pipe that runs back there like that, back to your air cleaner. Then on this side, you've got a fairly tight 90 degree there, or it's a bit, it's not quite 90. So it, I don't know what it is, like it's a, just, just a bit of an odd shape and it'll, it'll sort of just run back to that other cleaner. So by the time it's all in there, you can barely even see the rocker covers in it. But anyway, we're not going too bad at the moment. So I'm just going to um, mount this air start valve on. <clears throat> I might have to. I'll show you while I'm going. So, I don't know if you can even see it there, but that's the hole. So there's not a not a lot of room. Not a lot of room between. Air start tank and the fuel tank, so I'll have to get a bit creative and undo the straps on one of them, get it where I want to sit it. Obviously that's an existing air start hose. That's that white hose there goes in the top of your piston, which is on the uh, small end of that Sealco fitting, or Sealco valve I should say. The green line here goes out to your solenoid in your truck. <clears throat> yeah, so Anyway, I'll get that together and then we're going to be pretty close then. Um, I'll put some water in the radiator. I uh, still haven't put the oil in that box, so I better do that. I'll just drain out the filth that's in it. And But yeah, a little bit of stuffing about today. Yesterday was pretty good. We got the turbo mounted up. Um, everything fitted well. Um, got the lift pump on there. <coughs> you can barely see it in underneath it. The hoses here, look the hoses are a bit ratty but they'll do to start it up anyway. Like I say, we're not, a, not exactly chasing a low power problem at the moment. Um, like I showed you in the video, yesterday the stopper was nice and free, still is. I've got fuel primed up to it, so what I did... Um, a couple of new fuel filters. New old stock, they've been bloody rolling around the um, floor of a cab for a while or a floor of a toolbox, so they'll do for this job. And I've just I've just only got the one line going in at the moment, which is the suction or pickup into this jerry can here. Who can carry 20 litres of fuel or water? Jerry can. It's a good one for you. Use that one, I'll let you. Um, 
So I'm probably going to change these fuel tanks. Um, but yeah, that's that's where the, the pickup was, and that's the return. So because uh, the return doesn't run with the other hoses, it sort of runs under there and backwards around the other side. It's will take forever to pull it out. So I might just run a shorter piece of hose from it up to here if we get it running for any length of time. But certainly, just for the moment, it'll be all right. Um, what I did with these fuel hoses here. camera looking at you here that's a bit hard though I just can't really see looking into the Sun but anyway that's the worst thing about the open air workshop so you got fuel that comes into that one um, so fill the filter up always fill the filter up on these Macs when you're changing them and then I blew these lines out because they had wasps nest in the other end of them. Uh, cleaned them out. So I took the fittings off the hose and just cleaned them out and buffed them. So then I just got that, that old beer bottle there and I just filled these hoses up. So I filled the one over to the pump. Then I filled the one that comes back to this filter, which is, you'll see there, the in on this filter. So I filled it anyway, put a bit in there. And then um, filled that one as well and just pumped it back over to the to the fuel pump, um, so it's got fuel there now. So it's bled to a point where we'll have to wind. Sorry, sorry about the camera. It's bled now to a point where we can wind it over. I loosened off all these nuts on the top of it, so it's got fuel primed to the body of the pump itself. And once we start cranking the motor over, um, we'll just keep the hand primer going and eventually we'll build pressure and we'll start seeing fuel out the tops here that's what we'll be aiming for and uh, yeah that'll be for the, for the next video so this one we'll just about do for today I'll get a couple more things done before we lose daylight and hopefully tomorrow we'll have a bit of smoke coming out of it thanks for watching guys um, hope you liked the video I hope the, uh, the air start valve and the cool power box clean up where I'm a bit informative and yeah show you what I've done installed a couple more parts it's always good so um yeah we'll sign off and see you tomorrow